friends, we are over here at Creation Station. Let's just get right into this. We're gonna make a really quick batch of some salted caramel. I have never used this particular fragrance uh, before, but I'm gonna use it today. It smells incredible, really, really nice. Get those goggles on. This is gonna go really, really fast. I'm not even going to color it because this is going to discolor a really dark tan. I have put a tablespoon of water soluble titanium dioxide. What I do is I take a little bit of a portion of my water out of my lye solution, stick that in a little container with my one tablespoon. I pop that in the microwave to get it to a boil and that helps to disperse it really well. I use one of my little mini um, whisk. I don't have it over here, it's over by the sink, but this is what I use. So I use that blend it up real well, and then pour that whole thing back into my lye water. So let's just get going. This really is gonna go super quick. Well, first of all, before I even do that, let's check the temps. All right, so we're at 102 and 93, so roughly 10 degrees, give or take. All right, lye solution into the pool. I bought a whole bunch of brand new fragrances for this year's fall scents. I got them all from Flaming Candle. They all smell pretty good, with the exception of Falling Leaves. I don't like that one. It smells, um, it just smells like burning wood to me. Let's give this a buzz. Yes, I'm using a whole different um, stick blender because the one that I just bought, it's just too powerful. I can't deal with it. So I picked this up at my local um, Ocean State job lot for $13. It's only 100 watts, which is perfect for this. Anyways, the majority of the fragrances that I purchased from them, I think I got six or seven, I don't know, something like that, maybe even eight. I don't even really know anymore. It was a couple hundred dollars worth. At any rate, most of them are supposed to discolor. Yay, don't we all just love tan and brown soaps? No, no we don't. Whatever. I'm really thankful in one aspect of where I live because my customers could care less about what it looks like. If I made a really crappy looking piece of um, anything, soap, body products, bath bomb, sugar scrubs, body but whatever, if it looked bougie and gross, well, yeah, they wouldn't want to try it, but they don't want fancy. The customers who live in this area do not want fancy stuff. Good. <laughs> Alrighty, let me give a sniff here. <sighs> mm, I wish there was smell -o vision My, my, my. Okay, here we go. Get that whole sucker right into the pool. I'm not coloring this, obviously, because it's going to discolor on its own to a, well, it says light tan, and I'm gonna call BS on that. This is gonna discolor to a dark brown. All right, a little bit of a buzz. I'm using the new recipe that I formulated over a month ago with several different tweaks, rather. Um, I really, really liked that formula a lot, but I've tweaked it multiple more times to get it to be even better. And now I love, love, love it. And all I did was just tweak my numbers around from my other oils that I've been using for years and years, decades actually, because I've been doing this for over two decades. So I just kept those ones and just tweaked those numbers, but I added cocoa butter, avocado oil, and fractionated coconut oil to the rest of the oils that I have already been using. And man, oh man, let me tell you, it behaves really, really well. I've tried it with florals. I've tried it with spices. Um, it behaves incredibly well. Stays fluid for quite some time. Creates a nice hard bar the creamy factor is unbelievable. I formulate my um, soap recipe so that it's a nice thick cream. Uh, my customers don't want like really big bubbles that dissipate quickly and doesn't really you know, provide you with any moisture. They want a nice thick 
creamy lather, which is really moisturizing. I think the moisture content, uh, I don't know, I think it's like 52. All right, this is thickening up. It's fully emulsified. It's thickening up very nicely. This is really just going to be, um, if I can get this out of here, that would be nice. Um, this is just going to be one straight pour, as I said, no color, because as you can see, it's already turning yellow. It's a light yellow. I actually want it to turn that kind of caramelly color, you know? So that's why I added some of the titanium diox dioxide. I can't speak. My goodness, what is wrong with me? Anyways, all right, let's just get you right into the pool, shall we? Just one color. Man, it just, it looks creamy as I'm pouring it. This is like the most creamy batch of soap that I have ever formulated. I am just in love. I've done cocoa butter in soaps before. I'm gonna go ahead and um, post the recipe at the end of the video. And so then we will have two different uploads. I will have one on the regular part of my channel and then the one with the recipe, I will be uploading that into the member section. So you guys can try this too. So I can tell you that, hold on, I can tell you, let's see, the hardness is 46, the cleansing is 17, the conditioning is 52, the bubbly is 23, but the creamy is 34. Yeah, baby. All right, you guys, we're just going to give a little bit of a spritz on the top with our alcohol. We're not even going to texture this. We're doing nothing. This is like the simplest batch of soap ever. No color other than putting the titanium dioxide in the lye water. And I'm not even going to insulate this. And the reason why I'm not going to insulate that is because I'm going to take some really large, coarse grain dead sea salt. And I'm just going to put a little bit of a sprinkle on the top because this is salted caramel. And normally I would insulate this and force the gel, but I'm not going to do that this time. I'm just going straight down the middle. And hopefully at least some of the salts won't get all soggy and mushy and start melting from the heat once this does start going into gel phase. Alrighty, you guys. That is it. That is as simple as that is today. God, I love soaping days like this, where it's just a single pour, no muss, no fuss, no swirling, no layers, no different colors, nothing. All right. I'm going to bring you guys back in uh, just a few seconds for you, but tomorrow for me, and we will take a look at what this beauty did, how much discoloration already started, and of course we all know it's going to continue to do that. I made some um, sweater weather the other day, and where the notes said that it will discolor to a tan, I, I knew better, but yet I didn't. I didn't listen to my own self. I knew better. But, you know, so it is now a really, really, really dark brown. It looks disgusting, and I'm going to have to rebatch it. <laughs> Probably I will um, dissolve that down and make that into melt and pour. I will actually uh, put a link down below or up here somewhere where you guys can actually check that video out, where you can turn your cold process or hot process, for that matter, um, into melt and pour soap. It's just like doing rebatch. I did that video well over a year ago and got a lot of really good responses. I've never seen anybody do that um, before. And I was just in my experimental mode and said, hey, what's the difference? If we're going to make our own melt and pour soap with all the same ingredients and do it the same process, why can't we just take our cold process soap that's already made and just melt that down and add our solvents and make the melt and pour? And we can. Check that video out down below, you guys. But just a quick public service announcement. If you see another creator coming up with a technique that's never been done before and you replicate that technique, be a professional and give credit where it's due, especially if you have had conversations with the originator of that technique and asked for links to the video of that original technique. Do the right thing.
but stick around for just a couple of seconds and we will unmold and cut this beauty and see what happened overnight. The next day. Okay, it is the next day and we are getting ready to cut into the salted caramel. See how much discoloration has already happened overnight. It's gonna to continue to do that. It's gonna get really, really dark. It would be nice if it stayed this color because it looks just like caramel right now. All right, let's get this in here and we'll give it a cut. I'm gonna put it on its side so we don't have any of those drag marks going down through the salt. All right, here we go. One other thing that I love about this new formula is it unmolds very, very cleanly. Ooh, there goes all the salt flying everywhere. All right, let's take one out of here and we'll see. Oh, that looks really beautiful. Very creamy. Very nice. I wish it would stay that way. Just a little darker, maybe. you guys that is going to do it for today just a quick little video today on some salted caramel um, as I said I'm going to go ahead and post the recipe on the end of this video and that will be going over into the member section for those of you who are having a hard time finding the join button on YouTube I really don't know what the answer is you guys I'm not in charge of YouTube all I know is that you can't access that on your uh, cell phone or your tablet. It has to be on a desktop or a laptop computer. Um, I, I don't know why that is. Eventually I'm going to just go over onto Patreon and call it a day, but you're going to find the recipe uh, that I just formulated for this in the member section for only $6.99. All my video recipes are over there. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up, like, comment, share, all that kind of stuff. I would appreciate it oh so much, but until we get back together again, y'all, be kind and stay humble. Take care of yourselves. Make your own good choices.